this is the uh, original intro to um, a track called Spellbinder, uh, taken from my uh, 1990 album. Now, the uh, final mix of the album, unfortunately, doesn't include this particular section because the record company I was signed to at the time managed to lose the original sound recording with this particular part on it. That's the level of genius I was dealing with back then. Fortunately, there is a version available. Uh, it's on an EP entitled uh, Dave Sharman Live at the BBC. Uh, you can download it, uh, and I've included a link in the description box below. Uh, you can hear the full intro plus Spellbinder as they were originally meant to be. In the meantime, let's break it down. Okay, so this uh, intro is made up of uh, eight different sections. Now, each section is comprised of um, seven notes. Now, the best way is for me to break down each part individually. Um, this way I can demonstrate clearly and precisely uh, exactly what it is I'm playing. Now this is the um, first part uh, very slowly. Um, as I mentioned there are seven notes um, for each section. So the actual notes involved would be Now, um, how I alternate the notes um, is I take one note which I, I pivot off. So in this case it would be the, uh, the 15th fret on the top E string uh, or the G. Um, so I kind of use that as my note which I, I kind of pivot everything else off of. Now um, Initially, when I, to start with, I kind of come in on the on the thirteenth fret of the top E. That's kind of um, like a a passing note or a gateway note to the actual uh, G uh, the G note on the on the top E, um, which which I kind of think as um, the beginning note. But to start with, I kind of come in on the thirteenth fret of the E, just like this. <laughs> um, so. As I mentioned, you, you're coming in initially on the 13th fret of the E string, then to the G, so it's, there's the G, then you go back to the um, 11th fret of the E string, then the G, then the 10th fret of the E string, then the G. Now you're on the 13th fret of the B string, back to the G. Now we're on the 11th fret of the, of the B string, back to the G. And then you finish with the 10th fret of the B string, which is the last note. So, um, now what I would suggest is to, um, if you're not really familiar with uh, this sort of a lick, is to, because as I mentioned, there are eight sections in, in total, and um, each one varies with respect to the fingering. Uh, and it can be a little bit... Um, overwhelming if, if you're not really that familiar with this this sort of a lick. So what I would suggest is just to practice um, maybe the first one um, and then just get yourself comfortable and get to a, to, a, to a speed that you're comfortable with and then that'll kind of ingrain the actual um, concept of, of the whole thing and then you can just move it around. Um, take a bit of practice but uh, you know, doesn't everything, okay. <laughs> Okay, so for the second phrase, um, here are the seven notes. Um, like the first phrase, um, I use a couple of passing notes before I actually get into the phrase. Um, so for the second section, it would be the 15th and the 16th fret of the B string. Um, or the 16th fret and the 15th fret. So I actually come in on the actually come in on the 16th fret. Uh, so there's three notes, the 16, 15, and the 16. So it's like this. And then I kind of begin the phrase. Um, so it's like... So you're, you're down to the 13th fret of the B string, back to the D sharp. Uh, the 11th fret of the uh, B string, back to the D sharp. And now you're moving to the G string. So you're, you're on the... Uh, what is that? Twelfth, fourteenth fret of the of the G string, 
Now you're on the 12th fret of the G string, back to the D sharp. And you finish with the, the 11th fret of the G string. So the whole thing slowly is. Um, very similar to the first phrase. But obviously the uh, fingering is different. Um, as I mentioned before, it's probably a good idea to practice everything slowly before you go too berserk. Um, just build it up to a speed that you're comfortable with and kind of get it in your system. And then uh, the more you practice, the, the more comfortable you become and then it'll become like second nature. Now the seven uh, notes involved for the third phrase would be... Again, like the first two uh, phrases, um, the note there is a note that you're pivoting off of, and in this respect, it would be the D, which is the um, 12, 13, 14, 15th fret of the B string. So it's, uh, and again, like the first two phrases, there are a couple of notes which are kind of gateway notes into the phrase. Uh, so in this respect, it would be the the 15th fret of the uh, B string, the uh, 13th fret of the B string, and then back to the 15th fret of the B string, so it's... And then you kind of begin the phrase, so it's... Which is the uh, 11th fret of the B string, back to the D. The 10th fret of the B string, back to the D. And now you move to the to the, the G string, so... There's the G string, and that's the, the G on the 12th fret of the G string. Back to the D. The... 10th fret of the G string, and then back to the D, and then you finish with the 13th fret of the A string. So to play it slowly, fingering getting a little bit more complex, even though it's the same basic uh, alternating pattern, but you you start to vary the fingering. Uh, again, as I mentioned. Um, don't go too crazy with trying to nail it initially um, because you kind of have to, in a way, assimilate what's going on with your brain to your fingers and it can get a little bit messy if you try and rush. So I would just take your time, learn each phrase slowly. Now the seven notes for the fourth phrase would be... Again, very similar to the first three. Uh, there are a couple of uh, passing notes before you actually get into the phrase. Uh, so they would be the 17th fret on the G string, the 15th fret on the G string, back to the 17th fret on the G string. So it's like that. And then you kind of get into the phrase. So it's... So now we're on the 14th fret of the G string, back to the, the pivot note, which in this respect is the C. Then you're on the 12th fret of the G string, back to the C. Now you move to the D uh, string, uh, which we're now going to hit the 15th fret of the D string. Back to the pivot note, which is the C. Then you're on the 13th fret of the D string, back to the C. And then you finish with the the 12th fret of the D string uh, and so the whole phrase slowly is again different fingering to the other uh, phrases um, so just get used to it uh, get it into your system um, um, now uh, we're kind of halfway through so the seven notes of the fifth phrase are Again, uh, the pivot note in this respect would be the on the G string, um, uh, and this is the A sharp. So we have the passing notes getting into the phrase, which would be the 15th fret, the 14th fret of the G string, back to the 15th fret of the G string. Um, so yeah, so passing phrase accounted for. Then you're onto the 12th fret of the G string. Back to the pivot note, which is the A sharp. 
Then the 10th fret of the G string. Back to the pivot note of the A sharp. Then we're on the 13th fret of the uh, D string. Back to the A sharp on the G string. The 12th fret of the uh, D string. Back to the A sharp on the G string. And you finish with the 10th fret on the D string. Um, and that's that particular phrase. <laughs> So the seven uh, notes for the uh, phrase number six would be. Again, uh, the passing notes before we get into the actual phrase would be the on the G string. And it would be the 14th fret on the G string, the 12th, and then back to the 14th. So it's, that's the beginning. Then the phrase itself, so we're down to the uh, 11th fret of the G string. Back to the pivot notch, which in this respect is the A. Now we move to the D string, uh, which is the 13th fret on the D string. Back to the pivot note, which is the A again on the, on the G string. Now we move to the 12th fret of the D string. Back to the pivot note, which is the uh, A again. And then you're down to the 10th fret of the D string, back to the pivot note, and then you finish with the 8th fret on the D string. So slowly it's... You can get a little bit cramped with the fingering, because um, you're going to have to slip in, well as I mentioned uh, it's, it's really down to you in terms of the fingering, but I, you know, I'm, I'm using the 1st, the 2nd and the 4th fingers primarily when I begin. But then I kind of have to slip in the third finger to hit that 13th fret on the D string. Get a little bit uncomfortable if you're, if you're over practicing it. But, uh, but then you just have to, I mean, I just kind of keep going to the point where I just get it into my, into my muscle memory, so to speak. Um, so I, I practice it to a point where I don't need to think about it anymore. Uh, and, and, and I find that when you're going particularly quick, you don't really have time to think about what you're actually doing. Uh, the, the notes uh, and the order of the notes, are kind of, uh, they're, they're kind of ingrained in your muscle memory. It's a combination of conscious thought and muscle memory. Um, that's, I think, what makes um, extremely quick uh, parts on any instrument um, relevant it's because you don't really have time to think about it um, not on a conscious level so it's really in your muscle memory um, could be wrong so now we're on to phrase uh, number seven um, so the passing notes will be the, the 12th fret on the G string the 10th fret on the G string and back to the 12th fret on the G string so it's <laughs> And then the phrase itself. Uh, first, I'll play the seven notes actually concerned. So it's. So that would be once we've got past the, the beginning gateway notes. Which is the, the eighth fret on the G string, back to the pivot note, which is the, the G. Then we're on the seventh fret of the G string, back to the pivot note. Now we move to the D string, uh, which is the tenth fret on the D string. Back to the pivot note on the on the on the twelfth fret on the G string, uh, down to the uh, eighth fret on the G string. Back to the finishing with the seventh fret on the D string. So the whole thing is. Um, so we're almost at the finishing line, uh, and the final phrase. Uh, here are the seven notes. Again, we have the two passing notes, which will be the 11th uh, fret on the G string, the 9th fret, and then back to the 11th fret on the G string. So it's... And that kind of leads into the phrase. So the next note would be the 7th fret on the G string. Pivoting again to the... You know the pattern with that one note which you pivot to. So that would be the 11th fret on the G string, uh, which is the F sharp, so it's... Now you move down to the D string, which is the 10th fret on the D string, back to the 11th fret on the G string, then down to the 8th fret on the D string, again pivoting to the 11th fret on the G string, 
and down to the seventh fret on the D string, and then pivoting again to the eleventh fret, uh, the F sharp on the G string. Uh, so the whole thing slowly is. And how you finish it is uh, pretty much up to you. You can do anything you want. You can do something like. Um... <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much uh, the whole thing. So there's a, a fair amount to take in there, but I would just uh, suggest go through each part nice and slow and get it um, get comfortable with each each section. Um, practice uh, until you feel you can play it without uh, thinking about it too much. Um, then over time, uh, just work it into your uh, into your practice schedule. It's a nice kind of cool little riff, um, very neoclassical sounding. Um, and uh, yeah, I you know I like it. Okay, so that's uh, that's a wrap for now. By all means, do subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, I'll see you again.